Right. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. David Podner. What? What's going on? Uh, oh, we have guest. Hold on. Hey, mom! The meatloaf! <laughs> <laughs> oh okay. wow that uh, you would have uh you, you have successfully told a joke that no one ever nope. will get <laughs> oh no except for one person in the audience exactly <laughs> <laughs> and to that i say happy birthday craig <laughs> yes happy birthday craig and i had absolutely <laughs> no idea what dave was going to do all i knew is that he was going to do something <laughs> was, I wish I still was, had a sound bite. It was worth the wait. <laughs> <laughs> so how you doing, Mark? I'm doing okay. How about yourself? Good, good. We're good. Um, welcome to the show again. Uh, you're no stranger to the back. podcast, obviously. And um I just want you to know one thing. No matter what we talk about tonight, you'll always be the boss. <laughs> oh god, no, no, no. Because <laughs> only have... only you can fire us i have <laughs> happily passed the torch to 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 you guys and you guys have been doing a phenomenal job carrying the iphone photography uh it, it is it has been tremendous to see what you've done with with the feed you're you're back live on uh now on youtube back in the day with tiny shutter god we started live streaming on justin tv way back in the day and, and then switch to Ustream, i think and then some other service possibly i might be delusional because i can't my my, my memory doesn't go back that far uh the warrant <laughs> um and, and then and then we just stuck to um just uh just going recording and just posting the, the the podcasts and yeah it's it's been a a, a long strange trip long strange trip but i mean you're yeah. doing you're, you're 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 doing super well I, i'm so so happy to see what what you've done what you well both thanks <clears throat> yeah it, it's uh it's been it's been fun and um and it's going to be fun don't don't get me wrong folks we ain't going nowhere um <laughs> But uh, we are we are not pod fading. No, no, that that's just <laughs> for some reason, Dave and I just can't seem to do that. <laughs> and, and, and I mean, Dave is on other podcasts as well. So, that's amazing. Um, and, and, dude, uh, you probably uh, ha have done done the thing that I have never been able to do and, and be on this week in photo. Uh, that was oh. awesome to, to hear hear your episode. Well, thanks. That was um, that was a lot of fun, and Frederick and I will be getting together again to do basically like a continuation of that. Um, it's amazing. Now that the 15 Pro has been out for quite a while, and uh, we just got we just got to get our schedules aligned. We yeah, tried to totally. do it around the new year, but I was sick and just didn't work out. But uh, but yeah, there will be a part two to that at some point. Um, and uh, I had a thought. What was I going to say? Oh well, it'll come to that me. was an interesting show to listen to because when you mentioned a few things, I'm like, you forgot to mention this, you forgot to mention ah! <laughs> <laughs> well and, and I could I reply. will say I was a little nervous. <laughs> oh god. I mean, how long have we been listening to that show? I mean, I've listened to that show on and off for oh god, boy. To I mean, as long as we were doing podcasting, it, it's yeah. Been and we're talking Frederick here. Totally. The the man yeah. with the voice of James Earl Jones slash Jesus Christ. It's like <laughs> how, how how can that that is like a voice you can just butter bread with. It, it is <laughs> yeah. he, he is just such an amazing talent and uh and an awesome presence for photography. But but let's face it though, Mark, you have had the F4 group on your podcast. I did. Oh um. yes. Now, come on. That that's that's pretty impressive. And I, I tried to get Gavin to come on here one time and he said maybe someday, but he's just not ready to do it yet. Oh really? I didn't know. Yeah, just just because he, he uses a phone. Um he did he, he did a two or three videos with a phone, not yep. an iPhone, but still a phone. And I thought, okay, that's worth getting him on because it's freaking photo tripper. 
Oh yeah. I mean, he, I've had him on a couple times, uh, one with the F4 group and, and one without, yeah. uh, but for the audience listening, uh, the F4 group has m- much like the Beatles, they have now disbanded. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Uh, it, it is a, a team of, um, uh, Gavin Hardcastle, uh, an amazing landscape photographer, uh, Thomas Heaton, he is also a tremendous photographer. Uh, Nick Page, uh, he's okay. He's a Sony. Um, and, uh, <laughs> no, he's he, actually he, over in he's, he's over in the too. UK with Thomas right now, doing some stuff. Yeah, and, and then Adam Gibbs, uh, who uh, is the distinguished gentleman of the group because he is still the Zen a master photographer. <laughs> Oh yeah, and the Zen stuff. And stuff. But oh my god! So the whole thing about the F four group is that uh, they had gotten together for uh, one of uh, Gavin's invitations to the to the uh, I think the Banff area in, in Canada. And, oh yeah, and, and that was just a awesome, funny gag that they did. So essentially. They're doing photography, but they're doing these comedy skits uh, as like a, a bookend to the photography. And they got together and decided to do uh, uh, this huge uh, kind of like a tutorial, kind of like a beginner's photography guide for people interested in photography. And I thought it was phenomenal uh, for for anybody that's new to photography. I think it's super helpful stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, sadly, the, the, the critics, uh, the, the, their audience has kind of uh, lambasted it for either A, being too expensive or, uh, or, 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 or not uh, technical enough. Uh, and it, they kind of got flack for that. But I thought it was great. I, I th- that, so that day when I interviewed them for the Fuji Love uh, podcast, little plug there, uh, <laughs> they... Um, <laughs> I uh I interviewed them in the show them. notes. <laughs> yeah, I I interviewed them in the in the morning. And that evening I was interviewing Pete Souza uh who is uh oh yeah. Uh, an amazing legendary photographer. Mm-hmm. Like if there was one day that I was awestruck to talk to somebody, it was that day because this guy has photographed uh Obama's presidential terms. Uh, he was basically the White House photographer and, and capturing mm-hmm. everything. Uh, and he was also the the lead, uh, the the presidential photographer for Ronald Reagan. And I thought, wow, this guy covered both sides of the fences. I think it would be great time to have him on the show to talk about what's happening, current politics, and yeah, that that was probably the the day that uh, the the world wanted to crucify me the most. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I was branded as too political. So, oh, really? Oh, god, yeah. It was, it was. Uh, but but I regret nothing. I I got to talk to a a, a photo- photographic hero, and uh, yeah. his work I think just speaks for itself. Oh yeah, for sure. I, yeah. I mean, you with Pete, you gotta imagine the st- the amount of info- the amount of things he saw that yes. he can't talk about. I mean that that's kind of one of the things that we talked about. Like he was. Yeah. He was there in the room photographing everybody as they watched the video feed mm-hmm. of the raid on Obama. Uh, no, yeah, raid on Obama. Uh, Jesus, that's going <laughs> to... Don't go there. Don't go uh, there. <laughs> on uh, Bin Laden. Like, yeah. what I meant to say is Obama was there right, watching. Right, right. The that that, that literally iconic photo with yes. everyone around the table. Yep. And staring, at the, staring at the video feed. Yeah, it's yeah. I mean, just the the stuff that he was given access to was 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 incredible. Um, so yeah, well, he is a, he is a fantastic photographer. Um, mm-hmm. And and you know, so that's that's the 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 nice thing about doing a, a podcast about this stuff is the the people that you get to meet. You know, maybe maybe it's just um, online. Okay, that's fine. But the people that you get to meet and um and talk with and get to know a little better and yeah. so you know that's why i was a little envious i guess i could say when you had the f4 group on there because i love all of them i think they're all great and 
you know, I follow them all on YouTube and, and all that stuff too. So, uh, and, and Scott Baker in the chat says, talking about Adam Gibbs, he says the cranky old guy. <laughs> Uncle Grumpy. Yes. Uncle Grumpy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He he's um, a he's a good guy to talk to. I've had him on the show separately as well. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, he's it's 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 funny the the juxtaposition that he has on, on the channels. On his channel, he is very mellow, very down to earth, uh, very earthy, and and then he could just turn on a dime and, and just be be this comedic character on uh, Gavin's channel. It, it's pretty funny. It is. It's. It's. You know. I've. 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 I've often pondered that. Like, how does he turn that on and off like that? Because, I mean, you, you watch his own personal channel and it's so calm. And you know, that's why I called him the Zen Master because everything's yeah. so, you know, laid back and very tranquil. But then you get him. Get him on with Gavin, and Gavin just seems to bring that out of him. And and anybody else that goes on there, um, whether it's workshop students or whatever, they always seem to ham it up a bit, and it makes it really entertaining. I um, almost got on his show. Uh, on really? His channel. Yeah, uh, we just couldn't work out a, a, a time to to uh, to hang out. He um, so he he made a trip down to uh, uh, this area, uh, but he was going through uh, upstate New York, and I wasn't able to make that trip. I, I don't remember when he was. I think it was sometime in the fall, and I just had too many weddings to do. I I, I wasn't able to to take that time off um but uh yeah uh another time i'll have to do a skit with him <laughs> yeah um so we we, we brought you on mark because you wanted to talk about tiny shutter yeah so i mean that's basically how dave i think you got your podcasting start with tiny shutter did you did you not or were you on anything before that I'm trying to remember if I was not as a regular person. So Tiny Shutter was the first thing I was on as a regular person. Yeah. 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 Well, obviously, same here. I mean, it's I, I had never had any podcasting experience prior to um, start, starting out just as a guest on Tiny Shutter. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it, it got us into it. It got us into podcasting and and. You know, when I first started listening, Mark, you and Matt and Joe and um, and then first eventually Dave, because he then he joined before I did. <clears throat> you guys were rock stars to me. And uh, uh, I am and no look rock who's star. in the look who's in the <laughs> look who's in the chat room, Mr. Matthew Hoffman himself. And oh, he says, I remember geez. Tiny Shutter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, I mean, I, you, I, you, I you, learned... say you have to say that in the uh, pe 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 Pepperidge Farm I remember a tiny shutter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh uh I mean I, I learned a lot from you guys then and, and then uh you know coming on the show I was able to learn more and, and you know learned about podcasting and then you know it, it just went from there. Um but you you've got some some news about tiny shutter. Yes. I have finally been able to put the old dog down. <laughs> <laughs> I have been wanting for so long to put a bullet in it, <laughs> but for for whatever it reason, pains me to say, it, it pains me to hear that. I have always missed. Um, so here's the thing: um, Tiny Shutter as a podcast, the the spirit of the podcast has been passed down to 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 you, um, to to you both. It, it is I, I meant you in the plural sense of course um it just it just felt time right to 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 just end it it, it just felt like it, a natural progression uh of the channel i mean the the tiny shutter is in itself a spin-off of an older podcast uh called the lens wipe and for those of you who are gratefully not able to remember it, <laughs> it, it was uh, <laughs> it, it was famously given its subtitle by a one star review that we received. Uh, the left <laughs> pipe was always designed to be a very lighthearted photography podcast. We never took anything seriously. We made fun of everything, and uh, it, it was just 
something something to to just kick back and, and chat about. Uh, it was always designed to be conversation. And so the famous tagline was, uh, we get a one-star rating, and the the person berating us said, these guys lack, lack focus and direction. And, and yeah. we were reading this on the podcast. I'm like, <laughs> you know, that has a nice ring to it. <laughs> the lens yeah. wipe, as from then on, the lens wipe, it was the best description of the podcast. It's a podcast without focus or direction. Uh, and we ran with it and it did pretty well. And at that time, uh, at its height, we were talking about iPhone photography a whole lot because this is around the time that the iPhone 4 debuted. And we were just glowing at the, the ability that a cell phone can now take proper photos. Uh, it, it was unheard of to be able to do an eight by 10 print off of a cell phone. Um, and, and it was, it was that wonderful aha moment with Apple. Uh, plus I had a nice design. <laughs> it was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> and, so, and Matt, Matt Hopp, just, be, just before you go any further, Matt says in the chat room here in the chat on YouTube, um, his first guest spot on a podcast uh, or a podcast experience was ever that he had ever was on the lens white. Yes. Uh, so Matt Hoffman, we, f I, I forget how we found him. I think so back then in the, in the original uh, times uh, it was me, uh, another photographer named Keith Tharp. And we were looking for a third person. Uh, the person on the lens wipe, which was a, a, a buddy of mine named Maud Byrne. Uh, he was he was a photographer, but he was kind of already leaning away from photography. He he's very much into woodworking and everything, and so and he didn't want a cell phone at all uh, at, at that time, and so we were looking for a, a third person. So I'm thinking, all right, I let's use this little thing called Instagram. We could probably find somebody there, and, and I did a search. <laughs> I think for anybody doing landscape photography in the white mountains. And I, I, I wish I remember uh, the, the, the photo. I wish I remember what hashtag I was searching. Um, but I came across Matt's photos. I'm like, this guy's awesome. And, and I think if my, my memory is remembering that I, I saw pictures from his iPhone on, on the site. And so I'm like, you know what? Perfect uh let 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 let's purchase them <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and i went to find the buy button i'm like oh wait that doesn't exist yet um <laughs> and so i i reached out to him and and, and yeah and the the three of us uh were were quite the trio and that is when i was super surprised and super jealous of matt's ability to have this dry humor that was unparalleled like it, it was just comedy genius that i was in awe of and wished i had just like one tenth of it and uh <laughs> and yeah the, the the podcast had a had a pretty good success from the beginning uh i i, I like to tout that the tiny shutter podcast was the best iphone photography podcast we were also the only iPhone photography yeah. podcast, <laughs> yeah. and a couple people tried to 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 come into the space, um, but they just never stuck around. And while while the tiny shutter audience wasn't like crazy huge, we had respectful respectful numbers, and and, and so we were going well. And um, but here here's the secret that uh that that i've never shared uh until now um i was a bit of an asshole <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was i've i i feel that like just going through everything like i in retrospect i think tiny shutter started a little too quickly i i probably 
think it like if I were to do it again today, would try to do it a little bit more slowly because we went from lens wipe right into tiny shutter and I've always hated the name of the tiny shutter podcast. It was never my creation. Um, the uh, Keith came up with the tiny shutter name and I was like, all right, that's, that that's cool. All right. That's better than mine. I, I'll give it that. And then before I know it, he, he registered the domain and, and everything. And uh, it was just right from the get go. And so, so to me, I've always had uh, a little bit of a sore spot f- with the name. It, 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 it's my Charles Schultz moment. Uh, Charles Schultz famously hated the name Peanuts for his comic strip. Uh, and so, you know, he would always, it, but it, it stuck. It, it was something that his publisher gave the name for and went for it. And, and so that's kind of what I did too. Um and then you know things changed. Uh, Keith eventually left the show, uh, and again, I was, I was probably really insufferable. Uh, I, 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 my God, like uh, those those years ago, I feel like a different person. Um, and, and so, I've always tried to be less like that person again, um, and. and I mean, you live and learn. It, 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 it's crazy. Um, well, I've but, never considered you an a, an a hole. <laughs> oh, I can tell you that. <laughs> I, it, it, if it, I, I I hit it well, I guess. <laughs> um, well, or, or could it be that we just came on a little bit later? There is that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, people people change with age. I mean, I I started to listen. 2015 via Mixler. Okay. Oh, yeah. I remember Mixler. That was mm-hmm. the one that we yeah. went live on, I think. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. I remember because it was on Thursday nights. Yep. And I would listen to Tiny Shutter instead of listening to the presidential debates that were on Thursday nights. <laughs> <laughs> we were we we did go head to head with that. That that, that mm-hmm. was got all of our audience. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, and then if it wasn't for Mixler, we'd never would have known Craig and been able to wish him a happy birthday. There yeah. you go. That, that's one tradition I, I am happy to keep going with. Um, and so, so years went on, uh, years went on. I mean, we, we, Keith left, Joe Ferrara came on uh, and just w- was able to carry the torch and, and then at a certain point, like I famously, well, not famously, no, wrong, wrong choice of words. I personally say that it was time for me to leave the show because at a certain point, iPhone photography just became photography. It is now mainstream. It, it is, it is a, an appropriate tool that people can use. Uh, photojournalists use it as their backup uh, camera. They they could blend into a crowd much easier. Uh, it is now uh, a, an amazing video camera. It has been able to to film movies and get nominated for awards. It's like it's it's so that that kind of rebellious nature that the tiny shutter thrived on what was no longer there it's it, it was just you know all right it's it's it's, it's another day um <laughs> uh, i mean back when tiny shutter first started i mean the biggest things were oh my god look what we could do with this camera now look at what you know slow shutter camera oh shit that's awesome uh somebody photographed a wedding with it oh damn a- a- and like that's probably like the biggest feature uh my highlight rather for 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 the iPhone is being able to photograph a wedding using the hipstamatic app uh at, at a wedding that got a lot of publicity at the time mm-hmm. uh it's my only petapixel feature <laughs> uh the, me and Keith Tharp uh photographed a wedding in Connecticut and uh yeah it was uh it, it was a 
crazy day. And I mean, but back that's back when, you know, the iPhone was, you know, it was limited. I mean, the, 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 the cameras were overheating in our hands practically. Like, like it, you were able to warm a room with it. Because, and you were using a, a MacBook as your battery pack. I was using my MacBook as a battery. <laughs> yes. And now you could just, you know, I mean, what, what Apple famously did that uh, eight hour movie uh, that, that was one continuous motion throughout an art museum. And, and it's like, oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> it's it, it's there. It's uh, I mean, it's it, it's a viable tool. Uh, which, which is awesome, but but the the point is that Tiny Shutter needed to 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 move over, and, and I am very happy that you and Dave have taken over the that that uh, realm uh, and are carrying that torch forward. So Tiny Shutter, the the podcast ended. The site wasn't getting updated. Um, I held on to the name because of the YouTube channel. The YouTube channel still had uh, n- not a crazy awesome audience, but it has an audience there. Mm-hmm. And I, it's one of those things that I still continued to to post on a, a regular basis with an asterisk, regular meaning once or twice a year. <laughs> um, but it, it, I, I did it. And... and uh, it, it got decent views, um, and then, and then my j- just my style really changed. It, I, I started to do less and less iPhone photography, and I, I was more into uh, Fujifilm photography. Uh, that the desire to go back to that filmic look and feel was. Uh, w- was my calling. Um, but my my film days, uh, way back in the, you know before uh, before the before the millennium changed to a new number there. Um, you know, in the nineties, I was using point and shoot film cameras and y- using you know all sorts of black and white photography for my journalism internship slash temporary job for about a, a semester uh you know we we were uh, all taught photojournalism and you know taught to go out do some photography with it uh when, when the lead photographer wasn't available uh even back then journalism was on a, a tight ship uh tight budget and and so i love those days uh, of uh the the film days and when i first tried a fujifilm camera those days just kind of popped back because now i was able to photograph without needing to really edit a photo uh everything was done in camera uh the, the all the manual controls were there and the the color science for Fujifilm cameras was such that the JPEGs were just beautiful. Where and, and the raw files were like, eh, that's okay. And it was like the first time in my photography career that I was like, ah, screw the J- screw the raw files. I'm just going to stick with the JPEGs. Like, I, I like, think <clears throat> I think this is the first time that I've heard you explain that. You know, I I know you've been really. Um, you know, you've really enjoyed the film look, like, you know, the film yeah. styles in the Fuji cameras. Not, I, but I never really understood why, other than you just like them. But, yeah. but now, now it makes sense to me, <clears throat> you know, when you bring, <clears throat> excuse me, when you bring into the conversation about your your past and, and how you, you know, you learned with that. And I mean, anybody that's got 40% gray hair, it's probably used a film camera. <laughs> yeah. Chances I are. mean, it's making a huge comeback now. Mm-hmm. It is. It is. But, um, but I mean, I'm glad you explained why you, uh, you know, feel you the way you do about the Fujifilm cameras and, and their film sims and, and that sort of thing, because, um, I think that's important to know. Uh, and it's, it's 
really important to know for those who wondered why you got away from tiny shutter and and the iphone stuff as much i mean it, it's not that you don't use your iphone you still use it yeah but when you practice the craft of photography it's more fuji related than anything else at this point um yep. i mean and, and and it's got you uh it's got you doing a podcast about it right i mean the fuji film or fuji love is is a great podcast you have awesome guests on and we talked about that earlier and um but no it's it's all making sense to me now and and it's okay it, it's okay to be that way i mean for someone who uh pioneered the iPhoneography podcast genre i get or the iphone related um or the iphone photography genre of a podcast and now has basically put a, a stake in its heart <laughs> <laughs> it it's, makes sense so, it makes sense and it's okay yeah um so the 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 stake in the heart comes uh, i mean years later I, I every now and then in our uh in our iMessage chats i would always ask here and there what to call the the the, the tiny shutter replacement because it's always been in my desire to change it. And no matter what I came up with, it was always so stupid. <laughs> it was, and and I, I just couldn't pull the trigger. And, and the closest that it came was kind of had the spirit of the lens wipe where in our group chat, I, I finally just vented like crazy because it was just so frustrating trying to think of something. And I think we all came to liking the name Zero Likes. And, yeah. <laughs> and so it's like, you know what? That has a nice ring to it. And that's available. Uh, and so I almost went with it. But I'm like, no, that's too meta. And, and it just got me thinking, no, this would be a perfect replacement to the lens wipe that would carry the spirit of a, a, a nonsense show and so maybe i'll hang on to that maybe not who knows um if that doesn't work i could always go back to the meatloaf <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, but <clears throat> then i was watching some other stuff i'm like i just i don't know what i just want something to talk about film photography but i'm not doing film photography i'm doing digital photography it's not it's not film but it is filmish <laughs> and, it just, <laughs> and it just like like after all these years of trying to find the name trying to just haunted by the name the tiny shutter like, like the first thing i do i'm like okay wait a minute just relax i can't say this out loud yet but I can tell Matt. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I sent him a message because he's been using the Fujifilm system. I got him addicted to that crack. Mm -hmm. uh, and so well, and he just he just put in the chat room here. Um, Mark brought me over to a, to Fuji a couple of years ago. I still very much love shooting and editing raw files, but there's no denying that the Fuji JPEG files look amazing. Totally. And so <laughs> I, I run it by him. I'm like, am I crazy? Does this sound like a good name? And I... And he was cool with it. And I'm like, awesome. I need a second opinion. I'm going to call my brother. <laughs> and, and so while Matt has an incredible eye for uh, like, like that, that, that humor that he has, and, and he has a solid understanding of photography and knows firsthand the kind of photography that we're all doing with Fuji. Uh, my brother has a good eye. Or, or good ear or good head. I don't know. All, all the senses. Uh, he, he's uh, very big in marketing. Um, so I, he was like, oh, yeah, solid name. Go for it. And I'm like, all right, that's yeah. good. So I already bought and, the domain. I already did this. I already did that. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> there's I no, mis them, I, I, there's I, no I, mistaking, I, though, Mark, that Tiny Shutter was a brand. It was. You know, it was. It, it, it was a brand because it was the only podcast 
about um, iPhone photography at the time, and it went for nine years. It, it, it had a that, good run. That is unheard of in a lot of time, like in a lot of cases with podcasting, unless you, unless you have a big name, like, you know, this week in photo or, uh, you know, Mac break weekly, the things like that, that have, you know, a lot of money behind them and everything else. But tiny shutter. Um, we I, had I, no I, money and still did it. <laughs> well, I, I know the feeling <laughs> it's a labor of love. It really it is. Totally is. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, um, you know, it, it, it's a, it, it was a brand and, and I think that's partially what made it prob I mean, I'm just guessing here, but that probably made it a little difficult to finally let it go and replace it. It actually, you know what? I'll always hang on to it. Probably. I'll always hang on to that domain name. Uh, yeah. Tr truth be told, it felt good to finally let go of it. Uh, it, it just, it, it was because it always felt like that last bit that was net, you know, just pulling at my jacket or or pulling at my, you know, pant leg. It it just like it again. This is probably that asshole in me, but <laughs> like I wanted to make something that was all my own and and, and be able to to say. You know, here it is. I didn't want to have that. The fact that I never created Tiny Shutter's name, just it just it bugged me, um, and so and I didn't want that hanging on to the, you know the back of my mind. Like so, that makes that makes pretty good sense. I would say, like mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't your baby. Um, even though you were basically one of the two that kind of started it all, but you didn't, you, you weren't able to name it. And, yeah. you know, then it was, it was kind of like the, the redheaded stepchild for you, I guess you could say. Yeah. Or, or more distinctly, and now this is going to date myself. Uh, it's like that show, my two dads, we just never knew yeah. who the father was. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dave, what do you think of uh, of, of all this? I mean, well, you know, I mean Tiny yeah, Shutter holds a, holds a big place in your well, heart, it too, does. for sure. It most definitely does. But I know I understand if you're trying to start something fresh or, or you know, you want to say, this is me and I'm going to go off. And by the way, I also have eight years of this. I don't want to say baggage in a bad way, but you have eight yeah. years of history behind you. That it's going to be, you know, if this is the new tiny shutter, it's always some comparison. If even even if it's only internal, um, to oh, what how is this comparing to old tiny shutter? In your it may even be yeah. that little whisper in the back of your head, and you're like, no, 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 this is a new thing. This isn't tiny shutter. This isn't a, you know, after after a break, it's coming back. It's a new thing. So you need a new name. You need to say okay. That was Tiny Shutter. That had its time. That was of a time. Yep. Like I said, literally the, the 4 and the 4S for the iPhone was, oh, we can actually take photos. And if you show it to somebody, it doesn't scream cell phone picture. Yes. You know, it, you can't really say, you can't really say, oh, this is an iPhone, obviously 4S versus a average point and shoot of the time you would say and eh, they're about the same quality yep you know and that's what killed the point and shoot yes because it's like oh i have a cell phone why should i spend 50 100 150 dollars back when that was a lot more money back then you know 14 years ago or so uh for a separate device where i'm probably not going to have that with me all the time anyway and I'm going to have to then take the SD card out, somehow stick it in my computer, maybe do some editing on it. If I have the software, if I don't, if I have a Windows machine, who knows? Because there wasn't that much built in. And then how do I upload versus, oh, yeah, forget it. I'll just use the phone. So it's funny that you mentioned that because we've come full circle uh, because now people are saying, why the hell am I going to spend a thousand dollars on this smartphone 
when I could buy a two hundred dollar point and shoot camera <laughs> and take film that looks really awesome. No, no need to apply a filter; it's already built in. Yeah. Uh, it, it it's funny because so Fujifilm, I think, has had it correct the whole time. When you we, their biggest producer of uh, revenue for for the company, as far as the photography side goes is their Instax cameras and film. Uh, the, the little Polaroid things that pop out of the cameras. Mm. That is their bread and butter as far as, uh, as, far as photography goes. Uh, back in the day, the Canon, Nikon had point and shoot cameras that would bring in the revenue so that they can make better cameras for the DSLRs and everything would trickle down to, to the point and shoot stuff. That is Fujifilm's point and shoot camera. Is their point and shoot cameras, uh, <laughs> and, and it's one of the things that pops out uh, of their Instax printer when, when you pop in the cartridge and, and load the film. Uh, the the little uh, sun shield pops out, and on it it just says Fujifilm tangible photography, and that is probably like the best description of Fujifilm uh, in, in in this market. It, it, it It's photography that you can uh, hold, uh, whether it's the literally hold with the Instax printer, uh, Instax uh, pictures, or, you know, just get that nostalgic feeling that you can hold on to uh in in the digital cameras it is it, it is a, a a new way of presenting something that's old and uh tried and true uh and, and the cool thing is that this completely goes hand in hand with iphone photography because fujifilm has done an amazing job of bringing in that iphone photography with the instax uh printers you can buy uh, a printer that that does the 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 little the little films the square size or or the wide format and, and just bluetooth to a printer and be able to print your your photography and be able to hold that photography and share that photography and it's such an amazing feeling it, it is uh it's the best thing to share it is just it just brings a whole new dimension to your photography and uh it, you know as long as it can do that you know i'm always still going to uh be an iphone photographer at heart um but uh but i mean nowadays the fujifilm cameras are are my stills uh stills cameras but iPhones have done amazing things with the video side. The video side has grown so much more mm -hmm. in leaps and bounds compared to the photography side. Uh, and, and and so being able to use the iPhone as one of my video cameras for the Filmish channel is absolutely going to continue. And, and I can't wait to get either the the iphone 15 pro max or or the 16 i might as well wait for for that one to come out because the ability to do pro res on a and be able to finally at long last record onto an external drive will mm -hmm. go such a long way in uh in the video production that you know it, it just makes things super convenient well, you did, you did a video, um, uh, I believe it was a like an engagement video for a couple, yes. and you filmed it with a Fuji camera and the iPhone, and you yes. snuck the footage in there, and you didn't tell us what it was, <laughs> but you shared it with us, and we had to try to figure out which footage was the iPhone stuff, and yeah, it was very difficult. I don't know if I even got any of it right, to be honest with you. Um, the beauty you know, was... of the iPhone is that, during that production, so there were two of us filming. Um, there was uh, my buddy uh, who 
did most of the video production. Um, he uh, his name is Tim Esty. Uh, he does uh, he has a studio called Kensington Photography Studio. I think um, I forget what the dot com is. It's Kensington Photo or Kensington Photo Studio. Uh, one of those two. Uh, I, I just click on the the the, the bookmark and just yeah. kind of <laughs> Uh, but he, so for, for this project, he was do, primarily doing the video photography and I was doing the stills photography for this couple. And like, I, I came up with the script as I was talking to the couple when we were interviewing to, to see if they would hire me and they were very big into music. And, and then just this idea popped into my head. It's like, let's make a, let's make a video. And and so we did. And so the iPhone was perfect in that it was able for me to show uh, my buddy Tim what I was looking to do. And, and so like the camera movements, uh, like she walks into frame and I have the camera down by the sidewalk. And the 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 motion was for her to walk out of the store and then she would take the earbuds from her belt, put it in her ear, and keep walking. And and so the the camera is following that movement, it's going from her feet up to her legs, uh, up her legs. And she was fully clothed, by the way. You know, the body like n- nothing sexy. It wasn't bad. <laughs> my, right. You were ju- you were just following the motion. Following the motion, yeah. So, uh, God, I'm doing a spot on job of describing things tonight. <laughs> so I, I'm following up, and as it gets to her belt where the Walkman is sitting, it the camera freezes, and that for enough time for the for her hands to grab the earbuds, and then as she grabs the earbuds, the camera follows her hand right up to her face where she puts it on music starts and then it keeps going. And, and so like the, for pre-visualization on the spot, it, it was an amazing thing to have. And moreover, after we got all the footage in, I used a lot of that footage from the iPhone because the moment, the movements that, uh, were happening on the Fuji camera weren't the movements that I was totally looking for. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, the, the, the iPhone is just such a great video camera that you can make it as light as you want or as heavy as you want with, uh, with cages and all these other accessories. It, it is yeah. incredible. Yeah. yeah. And, and especially with the 15, the 14 and really the 15 with the action mode. Uh, yeah. The action mode with the 5X will give, I mean, it is almost 3D looking. Just the way that I, I, it can. On this camera. <laughs> well, it, 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 just the way that it can focus on because of the way it crops with the, especially the 5X. But yeah. with the action mode, the way it crops in to make it dead still. Yep. And I mean, we even, I, Ruth phone was starting to have issues so she got a 15 pro max uh i'm still rocking my 13 pro max yeah uh, i'm probably going to wait to the 16 but just we we just were trying it she we were walking in a um uh just saw something in the chat that threw me off thanks matt um <laughs> We were just leaving a restaurant in the, in the in the parking lot. She was walking. I was walking one hour over. I said, "Just videotape me as you're walking. I think don't you try to keep the chat." Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it was like, "Don't don't try to keep it sh- steady. Just make sure I'm in the frame somewhere." Yep. So she's walking along, trying. And we're both trying not to get run over by cars in the parking lot because people are idiots in the parking lot when you drive. And she's just holding it up with one hand. So she's bouncing. I'm walking along. And it's it's like she has, you know, a dead. Gimbal, yeah. yeah, it's like she has a gimbal and she's following me. And it's like dead steady. And it's focusing on me. And it's it's giving a little bit of a, 
a blur to the background. It's so focused on the subject. And it was like, <laughs> and yeah. it's like, and I mean, that that's the pro. I mean, I mean, she, pro max. So she could have a bigger uh, zoom right now because we only buy cameras once every two to three years. So figure might as well go a little bit higher. And we're not in Canada where it costs $10,000. Yeah, <laughs> Greg, which camera do you have? Which iPhone? I've got the I've got the 15 Pro Max. So your astrophotography that you're doing with that camera is absolutely just crazy. Well, uh, thanks. It is because my I I think I have the 13 as well, the 13 Pro Max, and do I have the 13 or the 14? Now now I don't even know. What uh, color is it? Uh, it is. You know what? It's, it's in a case. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have the. I have the 14 Pro Max. There you uh, go. Okay. So just to show the camera, I have a custom. Uh, oh. Thing. I. I. It, it's a Mueller Schmid case. Hold it up again, Mark. I designed this from. The, the remember that movie Asteroid City that came out, uh, that Wes Anderson mm -hmm. movie, uh, the, the the Jason uh, Sudeik, uh, no, Schwartzman, Jason Schwartzman's uh, character that he played had a a film camera called the Mueller Schmidt. I think it was based off of a a, 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 a Russian Kiev camera, uh, rangefinder camera, and, and, and so. I love that camera so much that I made my own iPhone skin and got it printed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but anyway, that that that's besides the point. My I can't do that kind of astrophotography like you're doing. My my astrophotography is looking like uh, worms mixed with really acid tripped pixels. <laughs> and, and, like like well, are you, uh, a tripod or are you hand holding that? Yeah, you have to you have to use a tripod. Um, I mean, I I owe all my astral knowledge basically to Shane Mostyn in Australia. He's got that YouTube channel where he um, it, it's basically night night photography with a phone, and and he and he has done with you know Samsung Galaxies and Pixel phones and stuff like that. But um, but he also does the iPhone, of course, and um. I've learned how to shoot and edit, <clears throat> excuse me, and edit, you know, from his channel, <clears throat> excuse me. And, uh, you know, I, I started with the 12 pro max and I went to the 14 pro max. Now this one, and, and it just keeps getting better. Um, we'll, we'll get to, to more about that though. When we look at our recent photos, because I have a couple of astro photos to show, but I want to just get back into the chat room here for a minute. <clears throat> excuse me. And, uh, uh, so a, a while ago there, Matt Hoffman says, tiny shutter's dead. Long live tiny shutter. Yes. <laughs> I, <laughs> I know. Never it, forget. Might as well. Uh, never forget. Never forget. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then he he followed that up with tiny shutter. When we were talking about, I, I, I mentioned that it was a brand. Um, Matt says, tiny shutter is a brand we never fully capitalized on. I've got a warehouse full of merch that I'm going to have to send to a third world country <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> That that's that sense of humor that Mark has, you know. That that's what uh, yeah. the Matt has, not, Matt, Matt, not Mark. Matt, 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 Mark. Has, yeah. <laughs> um, you know what? I still have a whole bunch of sticker, tiny shutter stickers. That, oh yeah, yeah. I have, that, but now I have to make uh, filmish stickers now. So yeah. Um, uh, Will Newcomb says hi from China. Hey, Will, glad you can join us. Um, and then Matt said. Uh, um, this is Mark's easy breezy, beautiful color cover girl moment. I think that's <laughs> possibly when we were talking about the video that you did. I'm not sure. Um, oh, probably. And he, he's pretty chatty in here. Uh, then he said uh, he currently has the 15 Pro Max, but he's planning on getting the 16 Pro Max Ultra Plus. <laughs> I'll probably <laughs> upgrade a year from now. Uh, and then uh, Will, he's looking forward to the 16 Pro Max. He's got a 12 Pro Max now. And uh, Will, you will love it. Um, I mean, who who knows what it's going to bring to the table, but the 15 Pro Max is amazing. And I know what the 12 Pro Max is like, so I know you're going to love that. And um, uh, then Matt says, ha ha, no one remember, remembers that movie. I think that's that movie that you just mentioned, Mark. 
So we're caught oh, up in oh. the chat room. But uh, uh, oh, let, let, let's admit it before we go on. We know what the biggest imp- biggest deal for the 16 is going to be. It, the, the big thing that Apple's going to talk about, it's unfortunately not going to be camera related un- unless we're talking oh. about pushing the 5X down to the non ultra. But it's going to be AI, AI, AI. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And whatever they're going to deal with Google, either Google Gemini or OpenAI with the agreement to be used as a large language model. So uh, Siri can talk to us in even more confusing ways. <sighs> Mark's nemesis. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the ongoing jokes that w- w- was perpetually on the tiny shutter podcast was my love for siri when it was announced thinking that it was going to be the best thing ever we could finally talk to our phones like just a casual conversation Mm -hmm. like this is the future guys this is amazing and then two weeks after I got the phone, this is the worst piece of shit in God's green earth. And <laughs> God damn it, they were able, to, true to Apple's fashion, they were able to make it worse every single fucking year. Like, just, so today I'm driving home. I, I, I'm i in the mood for rock. And so I'm playing like freaking Van Halen, anything with Eddie Van Halen with the guitar is just music to my ears i i I was just in the mood for some like just Mm -hmm. really weird shit and i am talking like i'm telling it finally play the top gun anthem and then it plays some weird like orchestra version of the top gun anthem i'm like no play the top gun anthem from the, the top gun soundtrack and then it was like playing the Top Gun soundtrack. I'm like, and, and, and the first song in the soundtrack is freaking the Top Gun anthem. And it skips that and goes right into Danger Zone. I'm like, no, play the Top Gun freaking anthem. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. I pull over into a gas station to check if that soundtrack is no longer in Apple Music. No, it's right there. First choice. And I'm like, oh my god, this is so stupid. And so I I, I keep dry, driving. I, I finally put on the right song and, and, and going. And then I ask it to play. Uh, I ask it to play "Purple Rain" by Prince. And I don't know what the hell Siri was doing, but she went, hmm, mm-hmm, uh, hmm. I'm sorry, I can't sing right now. I'm like, I'm not asking you to sing. What? Where did this come from? You stupid diva. What are you, am I, am I a record producer? No, I ask you to play a song, not sing a song, you stupid bag of circuits. <laughs> Steve Jobs must be rolling in his grave, laughing his ass off, and, and just, ju- just tugging at it, just enjoying the laugh from, from beyond. Because this is, I, I, I hate, Siri, there's nothing that Siri does that is good, in my opinion. Siri is a waste of space. She she can't even think for herself. She has to talk to freaking Apple's headquarters to 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 even pretend that she's having a thought, and, and, and she can never understand. Oh no, I would take that back. She can understand because I see the text show show up when I ask her to do something or. Or or, or 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 you know whether I'm dictating a text or picking a song, the the correct words will appear, uh, then they'll suddenly change to the incorrect thing, and she'll proceed with that. I'm like, where are you getting this? Why are you doing this? You stupid, stupid! I can't break this because I don't have Apple Care. Like, you, what you're doing this on purpose at this point? I, I really think that AI is here and is just screwing with me. I am going to make a clip out of what you just said, and I'm going to I'm going to uh, probably post it as a separate video because <laughs> you, you've you've heard of uh, you've heard of Jim Dalrymple. 
uh yeah <laughs> okay I, I think i was he... having a lewis black moment though <laughs> well no that sounded more like a jim dalrymple moment because jim has been very very vocal on twitter or x whatever you want to call it i call it twitter about yes, twitter. siri he <laughs> can't stand well, it he doesn't he work for apple now or, do, or is he no longer no, no he's more? retired he used to okay he used like he 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 started. Um, or I he remember the Dow Rumble started Mac Rumors, I think, or one of one of those publications yeah. or websites. And um, I mean, he used to go to the 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 keynotes and things like that, mm-hmm. like WWDC, all that iPhone announcements. And uh, but he's got a podcast called the Dow Rumble Report, and on his podcast, he talks about his hate for Siri, um, <laughs> because. It can't even set, as he would say, an effing timer. <laughs> yeah. So he had like his, his house. He lives in Texas. His house is full of of home pods. I think yeah. he has two or three big ones and seven or eight little ones. Yep. All disconnected now. He's using Alexa because he can't like he can't deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. He he just he's done. And yeah, it, it'll so, connect when it feels like it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I I, I feel for him. Sounds like a smart man. <laughs> but now that oh, I no, hear no, Apple... no, no, I, what what Matt said, uh, I asked Siri to give Mark a hard time and she never disappoints me. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, at least she's listening to somebody. <laughs> uh, and, and now that Apple is going, you know, going crazy with AI, now there's no telling what Siri won't do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> So, Jim, if you hear this, you know, we feel for you, brother, because <laughs> Siri annoys the heck out of me, too. Like, I, I use CarPlay when I'm driving. Oh, don't even get started with CarPlay. I, I tell Siri to send my wife a message or whatever, right? And it just sits there and makes this weird sound. Oh, yeah. She, she'll know. she'll go, mm-hmm. like, 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 she can't be bothered. I'm like, what, what, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> you know, just, oh, see, I, I must I must be lucky because I have I have CarPlay and it works great for me. Siri oh, does, yeah. <laughs> Mark, this is a family uh, friend of the show. <laughs> yeah, <It was. laughs> yeah. Until you brought up Siri. Well, yeah. you don't believe but it. No, this I mean I thing. I can't I can hit the little button that says tell Ruth I'm here. Yeah. It'll say, okay, which 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 you know which phone number, mobile or office? I'll say mobile. Okay, I'll send it. I got a HomePod behind me, and it just said, "I'm sorry, I can't respond to that." See, I'm telling you, it doesn't matter where it is. She knows me, and she's <laughs> me. Oh man, it, it's it, it is it's annoying. It's annoying. We have proof and, uh, now. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. <clears throat> well, okay. So let's let's move on to um, be, before we, uh, you know, before Mark's Completely head blow blows it. up. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh, oh well one fond memory I have of Siri is um uh Just I one. <laughs> when, well Tiny Shutter, I forget what I did, but I got I think it was I, I think it was your birthday, Mark, and it's, I got I, I told I typed all this stuff out. And of course when you when your iPhone reads out loud, it's in Siri's voice. Yeah. And I got it to read like a birthday greeting to you or something like this. And <laughs> <laughs> it just it just annoyed you at all to no end. <laughs> oh. But uh anyway, uh so okay, so we'll we'll move on now to um you know, we we've covered uh you know what happened with Tiny Shutter and um and all that stuff. So uh you know it, it's you know for from from my perspective and I'm I'm sure from yours too, Dave, it's it's sad to see it go like that, but mm-hmm. change is constant and um yeah. You know, and, and, and it's there's also time inevitable. for everything and there's times for everything and time to move on. That's right. Yeah. So so now we're going to go on to our recent photos. Um, so Marcus sent us a couple and this is an exception that I will only allow with you, Mark, because yours are not iPhone photos because, and that's and that's OK. Um, <laughs> it's not about the camera this time. It's about the photographer and, and about the photos themselves. So I'm going to put them up on the screen here. Uh, let's see now. Where am I? Where can I find them? Oh, it helps if I open the window. <laughs> and that's the nice thing about YouTube is I can even edit this part out. 
where I look like a fool. Nah, leave it in. Okay, I'll leave it in. I, I after my tirade, you're, you're gonna look like uh, the King of England. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I mean, I don't know. Depending on how you view him. <laughs> yeah. You're looking uh, good. Is what I'm, I'm getting. Trying to find the darn birthday. Okay, let me uh, do this. I'm going to cancel this screen share for a second. Okay. If I can find the darn cancel button. Oh, here we go. There it is. I found it. Yay. Okay, so... um. This is a picture that you've shared with us in the past, and I really think it's cool. This and, um, so was an amazing. You know, basically, thing. yeah, we'll just to tell the little story behind it here. So we just <clears throat> we just had a hurricane at this point. Um, I forget what summer this was, but uh, I I was taking the family up to Newburyport, which is not far from where I live, and. It is just nothing but fog. And this fog is not going anywhere. And I, I'm listening to the news uh, on the local radio station um, and saying that the fog is just everywhere. And I'm like, okay. And, and then I, I drive past Newburyport, my wife's, and I'm with my wife and kids. She's like, what are we doing? I'm like, we're taking a little detour. She's like, where are we going? I'm like, we're, we're, we're going to Maine, honey. <laughs> we're going up to Kenny Bunkport. Uh, and uh so we we drive up there, get some ice cream. Uh and, and kids are very, having a blast and, and this fog is just just so thick. Uh, like like it, it is I I'm astonished that it's not going anywhere. And it took us like a like about 40 minutes to get up there. And, and so what you're looking at is Perkins Cove. And I am on uh, a, a little walkway bridge that, that's cutting across the, the waterway into the cove. And what what you don't see, because it's covered in fog, like everything in the back, that's all land. Like, like they're, they're, it, it, it ends abruptly. And it, it, it's just full of like restaurants and houses and... Um, but but because the the fog is just this thick, it's making it look like it's just endless, and, yeah, and into so, an abyss. Yeah, and, and so I am shooting with the Fujifilm X Pro Three that I had on loan from Fujifilm, and I forget what lens I'm using. I think I'm using the thirty five millimeter lens, uh, which is equivalent to a fifty millimeter lens on a full frame, and. And I just grab a bunch of photos uh, and it just looked absolutely haunting. And these are some of my mm -hmm. favorite photos that I've ever taken. It, 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 I, I just love these two pieces. Yeah, it, it looks like a scene out of that movie. I know what you did last summer. <laughs> I never saw the movie, but yeah, it, it's. Yeah, it, it, it's just, oh, my God. Like yeah, I, I was thinking like a Stephen King or M. Night Shyamalan. Yeah, oh, yeah, there you go. Film. Yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. And now when you, you okay, so shooting it vertical like this, is it because oh. it just fit the composition better? I took a, a bunch of photos. Uh, uh, I took a bunch of horizontal and, and vertical. The vertical, I think, does better at giving the fog more character. Um, okay, yeah. Because the mm -hmm. one thing I couldn't control was the alignment of the boats. Uh, when when I did the horizontal photo, the the boats on the left and the right were very askew. There mm -hmm. wasn't that 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 because uh, right here in this photo, you're looking at it, and it's almost like a triangular uh, shape mm -hmm. into the distance. Mm -hmm. You lose that with the uh with the horizontal photo okay and, and yeah. so i i took a vertical shot just to kind of keep everything together and uh it, it retained the shape a little bit better um 
and uh, again, like the the other thing it does is that emptiness in the uh, the top part of the photo, mm -hmm. where it, it can be considered negative space for for the eye, but your eye just kind of goes towards that. It starts at the bottom and just drifts upward into nothingness, and yeah. the the nothingness is what is so intriguing about this photo. I think. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's really cool. Um, uh, uh, okay, so no editing. I'm gonna say. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you didn't need any. I mean, no. you know, you don't need don't no dehazing any or anything like that. It, it if you did that, I think that would ru ruin it. Actually, mm -hmm. it, would, it would ruin the um, the uh, the the essence of the image. So. Uh, yeah, that that is really cool, and I've 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 seen this one, like I said before, you've shared it with us before, and and I think it's really cool. Uh, this is probably my been most successful Instagram photos too. Oh yeah, yeah. interesting, yeah. And you know what? I had no idea there was land in the background. I didn't. Oh know. yeah, uh, mm -hmm. I, I I should show you what Perkins Cove uh, looks like w w without it. Um, because yeah, it, yeah, that'd be it's interesting. completely different. It's you know very what? small. I, I don't know if I want to see it because it would spoil this one. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, that'd be interesting. Uh, um, but yeah, no, it, it's it's cool. Uh, the water is not, it's it's I'd say very still looking, but with the, just enough waves to break up the reflections to give it that, um, you know, that creepy it's look, unsettled. and then a few yeah. birds, a few birds flying around in there, and. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So, Dave, here's your first one. Yep. So, mine's a little bit uh, brighter, if you will. Uh, so, this was taken right before the race uh, that I had on Saturday. And it, the rain just stopped. So, we had a, a steady, not, not a torrential downpour, a steady rain. So, the waterfall there on the right side was going at a pretty good pace. And the water itself was was flowing pretty good still, and I just like the the the, um, the bridge was recently redone, so it's fresh wood there. So it yeah. doesn't so it's not aged yet. So that yellow of the wood of the pine just kind of pops out at you, as there's no green anywhere still. We're we're not going to have green for another month or so. Before you, you know, hmm? where are you out of again? Uh, Pittsburgh. This is just north of Pittsburgh. So yeah, we're, too. yeah, we're still far enough north still where yeah. thing, things are just starting to turn green. Yeah. Um, the, I mean, we didn't have, we have had an exceptionally light winter. Yes. Uh, same. Yeah, I mean, normally we get we get less than you guys, than both Greg, you and Mark. Um, we normally get Pittsburgh like 40 inches of snow a year. And I want to say it was under 20. So it, it's been very, very light snow. So uh, just and just a couple periods where we've had really cold snaps below freezing. That's, that's um, pretty much what we've had, too. Yeah, it's pretty much the so, same winter. So I mean, but I mean, we still we're still as as Matt would say, we're still in the middle of stick season, or at the end of stick season. Um, but you know, you got a little bit of green there, and the grass is green, and, and this is a county park that the race was held in. So it's a it, this is like a nice little walking trail. And you know love to see with this photo, hmm. I would love to see you do like a four seasons kind of deal with this. Mm. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. And then frame it in such a way that you're, you're seeing all of it. All of it for Yeah. Yeah. Because there's this, what, what catches my eye is that there's no one around. Right. Uh, yeah. And, and I, I love the waterfall, uh, the walkway, you know, it's nice and brand new, but like when you see it, if you could capture it in the same position in, in the springtime, when things are starting to bud, mm -hmm. maybe more people are starting to show up again. 
uh, and get some nice candids of everybody walking by in the summertime when everything is like full on green and everybody, you know, jogging mm-hmm. people and uh, and the, the water is dried up because of uh, global warming that no one wants to admit to. Uh, oh, I just went political. <laughs> <laughs> um, um. So uh, and then like in the fall, I don't know what kind of foliage you get in the, in the fall. But oh, I- it, it's it's br- it's brilliant. I mean, it's not it's not mountain of Vermont, New Hampshire type thing, but it's very colorful, very, very colorful around there. We just don't have it. It's it's been spotty the last couple of years where there will still be a good amount of green with the reds and the green. But but then by the time the green then switches over, the other ones have kind of went off. Yeah. So the ta- the timing just seems to be off. I mean, we just we're, came we're not having that El Nino. So, I mean, yeah, yeah kind of ruined things. Uh, but yeah, I mean, th- what this is tell what this is showing me is a kind of like a slice of life. And mm-hmm. uh, uh, yeah, I, I dig it. And anything with a waterfall is always. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I think the uh, the 16 by 9 um, aspect yeah. ratio really works with it, too. You know, it, it, I think if you had gone four by three, you'd have probably too much sky. Yeah. Which would kind of yeah. take the eye away from it. And then and uh, and then the or, or if it was at the bottom, you might have too much sidewalk or path at the bottom that really yeah. doesn't add to the to the to the to the image. And also, mm. I, I wanted to have like the the crick, the way it kind of goes from you know, middle right kind of going bottom left. Yeah, to kind of stretch out the photo that way. Yeah, and, and uh, the other I, thing I want to see is that I want to see that bridge age. Mm, yeah, because it almost becomes a it almost becomes a focal point here, and I want to see how it changes over time. I think that would. I think if you're going to have that in, in your uh, uh, in your composition, then seeing that change over time, I think, is going to be worth. Uh, it, it it just enhances the photo. So if you see anybody come along, Dave, with a, a can of um, you know wood treatment stuff. Knock it, knock it out of their hands. <laughs> Tell them to leave it alone. But no, that's part of the story, though. So yeah, um, I mean, he only has to worry about it three more times. So that's true. <laughs> yeah, that that's true. true. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's an interesting con- concept, Mark, about the uh, the four seasons. Um, it would be interesting, and a great band. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a. a one of my astro shots that I did, and this is uh, obviously Orion, the uh, Orion the Hunter, I call it, the um, the constellation. And uh, what was I doing? I was coming home from, I, I did a, a, a presentation on iPhone photography at a club, a photography club nearby. <clears throat> and I was coming home that night and I thought, wow, you know, like the moon's not out. I could probably get some decent astro shots. So I made a little detour to this little back road that I've been down before and took some photos. And, um, I didn't have my tripod with me, but I had enough stuff in the car. I could just put it on the tonneau cover of the, or the truck rather tonneau cover of the truck. And I could prop my phone there and use this, use the timer and do a 30 second night shot. So this is just the Apple camera, 30 seconds night mode. And, um, now, I did crop it a little bit, about 10% of it's been cropped out. And, uh, there was in the top right corner going, you know, diagonally down across the corner, there was some power lines that I took out with touch retouch because they really took away from the image. So I had to remove them. <laughs> they did, you know, had I left them, I mean, yes, it was, that's the fact that they were there, but, um, I just oh, think the right image cool. is better without them. Yeah. Did you do anything special to the the constellation stars? No. Uh, well, I mean, I think Make the glow, up. the glow yeah. may be a result of the editing. Gotcha. Uh, I, I edited it. Yeah, the I did, the so blue it, color really pops on the stars. Yeah. Yeah. 
um, so I did the edit in Lightroom mobile and um, it was a pro raw file. And I basically just did all the stuff that I learned from Shane, uh, Shane Mostyn on his YouTube channel about uh, how to edit. He shows how to edit these types of photos. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I can't remember what all I did, but, uh, you know, probably a bit of dehaze, a bit of clarity, mm -hmm. um, turned the blacks up a bit, um, yeah. you know, maybe adjusted the whites to make the stars pop a little bit more. It's, I, I really don't remember what all I did, but, um, but it worked and uh uh and it was cloudy the the clouds were low in the horizon like low in the sky oh that's I see. what you see yeah. there mm -hmm. yeah um so it wasn't a perfectly clear night but but at least it was clear enough that i can get a, a half decent shot nice i like how beetlejuice is nice and red or or orange in that one yeah yeah <clears throat> no this, this is really cool and so now, Mark, your second one. So this one is just a little portrait of how I blinged out my uh, X-T5. This camera is my uh, pride and joy. Uh, it is my workhorse, and uh, I, I love it to pieces. This is this is my mule near to my uh, to my Thor. Uh, it, it is just such a an, an amazing little camera, and on top of that. It, well, the camera is on top of my other pride and joy. <laughs> I do this in as a joke because, God damn, I love this cooler. This cooler, <laughs> it's called an oyster cooler. And, and as the one thing that I splurged on last year, um, it, it is, uh, I, I, I paid a little too much for it. I'll, I'll admit that. But this thing can hold the cold like no one's business. And it is just such a cool thing to have. It is, as you would, as I would like to say, it's the Apple of coolers. <laughs> <laughs> because it's, now, it's so not well powered by anything, is it? Like there's no power to it of any sort to keep things cool. Like there's no uh, refrigerant in it or anything. You it's can. Just... It has these uh, cartridges that you put in there, uh, the, but they're just like j just. You know how you, you have those blue cooler things that you pop in, the, the little ice packets? It has a oh, couple yeah. of those, but they fit so seamlessly at the bottom, and they don't completely freeze either. Uh, oh, because really? the, the insulation on this is so good that if you were to put something frozen in this thing, it would stay frozen for a good amount of time. And so, cool. if you put it in your drink, your drink would freeze. Uh, Mark, oh, yeah. I just happened to um, do a search for oyster coolers. Yep. And that cooler, I believe, is on the front page. Yep. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. When you when you said it was expensive, it says, I, I was not. I was not expecting that. It's half an iPhone. <laughs> What? Yes. Wait, wait, it's on sale though. It's on sale on their website because it shows regular price of six hundred and five dollars, but it's on sale for only five hundred. Or you can do installments for forty five dollars and thirteen cents a month. <laughs> wow! So the reason why financing I bought... a cooler. <laughs> it's uh god damn like this this i i love this thing. 5.6 kilograms for weight that's heavy yeah that's um, like 25 that, pounds that, yeah that's a good workout that's not that bad um that uh handle can switch to a strap and, and it's mm -hmm. much easier to to carry from there yeah but the reason why I bought this is because when I do weddings, um, I, I'd like to bring my own mm. for before the wedding, after the wedding, or it, sometimes it, even during the wedding. Uh, if I'm not, unable to eat uh, over there, I'll, I'll just bring my own food. And the one thing that I always hated doing is, is uh, bringing my own cooler. The ice would melt. Everything gets all watery, liquidy. 
and, and mm. it just turns into like a mess. Everything turns soggy. Like no matter what I insulate things with, like a container, water still ends up seeping in and, and it just becomes a pain. Don't have to worry about that anymore. I don't need to put in ice. I just have those two little packets mm-hmm. that, that I throw in there. And the rest of the space is, is, is perfect. Um, I would have liked it a little bit bigger, but you know, I'm fine with it. Uh, but it, it's going to fit everything I need that, that for, for a wedding, like I could fit plenty of drinks, my sandwiches, my, my fruits. Mm-hmm. Um, I, and I just think that the cooler looked great with my awesome look good camera. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. It, it's it, amazing. It, it, it is a definite high end look to it. Definitely, oh, oh, yeah, it's a definite yeah. high end look. Yeah, it um, and, and I find it just amazing that we, uh, <laughs> as a show about photography, we just finished talking for about four minutes about a cooler. <laughs> I I threw that in as a joke. I, I thought it was fitting. Uh, no, it's pretty cool. It's it's it's, <laughs> it's interesting. Um, but the camera itself. Now getting back to that. Um, you know, just kind of real quickly, what 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 is it about it that you like so much? It is, it, it's super fast. The the image quality is second to none in, in my book. Uh, this is one of the this is using a fifth generation sensor where uh, Fujifilm was making like forty mega forty megapixel sizes uh, on an APS-C. Uh, size sensor and like ju- just the processing power on this is, is amazing the video files come out great uh it, the the uh, stills look amazing the amount of film simulations that it has is uh pretty on par and it's getting up an update this summer to have a uh, have one more um the manual dials are just everything that i look for it's almost perfect. Um, the only thing I would love more than this is uh, the X Pro model. The X Pro models are the the rangefinder style cameras, and this is more of a DSLR mm-hmm. style camera. Oh, yeah. Okay. A- and the problem is the X Pros are it, it hasn't been updated yet. Probably won't see another update for another couple of years. So, mm. hey, but what would be your favorite lens to put on there? Oh, without a doubt, the 33 millimeter lens. Oh, yeah. Uh, the 33 millimeter is their newer camera to replace the 35 millimeter camera. And uh, that has a F4, uh, so it's super fast. Um, and it's about 50 millimeter focal length. And that's my favorite focal length. Uh, it would be that lens to, to have on it. And second would be probably the 18 millimeter which is about a 23 millimeter, uh, similar to the iPhone. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. Yeah. And I, I really like the wooden handle on it, like the, the grip. So in, in the... all my cameras have that now. Um, that is such a lifesaver. So what you're seeing is the, the wooden handle is connected to the bottom plate and the bottom plate stretches across the bottom and and it goes up the side uh, of the other side of the grip. So it, it, okay. it's an L bracket. And okay. the reason why I have this is because it offers an extra set of protection to the camera. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have the, I had the X-T2 uh, that I would use for weddings. A- and um, Matt now owns that camera. <laughs> oh, but yeah. Okay. I, I have... Uh, during a wedding, I had two of these strapped to my side. Uh, I, I have a, mm. I usually wear a harness on my shoulder and I have two cameras dangling on either side of me. I had to change out the battery on one of them. And then I put my arm down, I'm holding the camera, and I thought that I hooked it back up to the harness and I didn't. Mm-hmm. And I dropped it. Uh oh. Right on the pavement. Ooh. Camera. Yeah, cracked the back of the lcd and but it still worked fine the the l bracket took most of the impact oh that's good and 
I was very grateful for that. And now all my cameras will, will have that. Yeah. Well, it's like putting the case on a phone, right? Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Well, cool. Dave, your second one. Yep. Uh, this one was also taken on Saturday. Uh, this was uh, just not too far past the start of the second loop around the lake. Um, and this is kind of the main road leading up to the park itself. Um, but this part of the, the, as they call it, a walking trail is really just the side of the road. So you have the regular road going around and th this is an old county park. And so you can kind of see where they have the, um, on the left third the little bit where it can go underneath and drain out. It's an artificial lake. And unfortunately, the actual tower, if you will, that's kind of right in the middle of the picture, just a little bit of the right, that's cordoned off so you can't go on the walkway around it, unfortunately. I don't know if it was ever open. Uh, I can imagine you get some great pictures from right there, but I understand for safety reasons, you don't want people, especially kids, Walking out mm -hmm. there and, you know, I can see teenagers and kids diving off and I don't think it's that deep there and it's not exactly swimmable. So you don't want to have any issues. Um, I just like the way that you have the kind of the walkway framing in front of you, the road kind of going off in the distance. And you can see how you can see the the um, little bit of waves kicking up by the wind that was hitting kind of towards the right side and coming towards the left. Yeah. And it was, it was, a, it was, even though the rain stopped, it was still kind of overcast the whole time. Yeah. This, this really would cool. look good, uh, you know, in the summertime too, you know, with the, oh, yeah. with the foliage yeah. and whatnot. Um, but here we are, we're stuck in, in stick season. And, um, <laughs> but again, the, the 16 by nine ratio, mm -hmm. uh, does it justice. Um, probably would be again too much sky or too much of that uh, you went from a wood railing to a concrete and stone railing yeah. <laughs> which, is, <laughs> which is interesting um but it would be too much of that i think in the frame and um you know it, it uh does anybody ever go boating in there or anything or oh yeah 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 and actually um down the road around a mile behind behind me in this case th there is the boathouse and they rent canoes there and different boats oh, okay um that you can go on people fish on the side of the on the lake mm -hmm. there were a few people actually fishing that day oh yeah uh really bundled up because it was just barely above freezing with like a 10 mile an hour wind so oh, you were yeah. it was a bit yeah. on the chilly side uh but yeah there were people you know out there fishing and just being out there. Yeah. Well, cool. <laughs> any, any, any further thoughts, Mark? No, I mean, you, you captured it pretty well. Uh, yeah, it does look freaking cold. <laughs> 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 well, I'll say this, uh, that it, 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 when you're out there and you're physically doing something, it's not as cold. The problem yeah. is that when I was going this way, the wind was to my back. But of course, then you make the right hand turn kind of going down the road and you make another right and then you head back. And sometimes, you you know, you're going along and that wind just kind of picks up and hits you right in the face and yeah. just kind of, you know, because it's hitting you right in the face, it kind of takes your breath away a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're like, yeah, OK, sure. I have to I have to stop or I have to turn around so I can breathe a little bit easier so I don't have a, a, a you know. Uh, just a breeze going right in your face, a cold breeze. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, just, just, just looking at it, you can tell it's kind of cold. It's, it mm -hmm. has that feel to it for sure. Well, this is my second Astro shot taken the same night as the first one. Um, uh, this time with the, uh, power lines in the frame and, um, pretty much the same deal, you know, put the phone on the, back of my truck and propped it up and whatnot and uh you know the so, some of the stars are actually um elongated so i don't know if maybe the phone shifted a little bit during the process i'm not sure but 
It's kind of a weird thing. Usually they're pretty good for being still. And this one is not cropped, but it is straightened. So I, I, I lost a little bit around the edges. But other than that, uh, pretty much the same edits as before. And um, yeah, I, I just felt the urge to do, to take some pictures of something because this time of year is is the least motivating for me for for getting out and taking pictures unlike scott baker who's probably still watching if it's not too late for him um but he's in the chat room and he's been just nailing it with sunset pictures recently uh out in nova scotia but um so you know watching guys like him post pictures just about every day of stuff they've been shooting it's been getting me kind of antsy that's why i went out tonight before i come on the air to do um a few sunset shot sunset shots down by the water here and i have to even look at them yet to see what they're like but uh but yeah i just wanted to take a picture of something so stars it was <laughs> i what's to the right of the photo uh more clouds and then the more out of the frame the more you go to the right the more it gets the lights from the city that i live in yeah so I pretty much that was that was almost as far as to the right as I want I cared to go because then it would just be light pollution, yeah, and more clouds. I would have liked to see. To me, I, I like what you did with the, with, with the power lines. I I think you made it into a good, uh, good character, uh, in this or 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 the a good focal length. It would have been awesome if you could move it more to have the power lines more in the center, so that way the 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 way the power lines are coming up from the upper left going down to the lower right. I I really dig that, and I wonder if you could crop the a little bit off the the left side and just leave the the right side empty. Like or not do anything or or even tried to do an AI fill to see if it would fill in the the spot. Well, with... I've got nothing to AI fill it with. I don't I don't have Photoshop or anything. So, um, oh, gotcha. Um, so it, the I mean, the only thing that I would have that would do anything like that might be Snapseed, but I don't even know how well it would do. No, that's fine. Like, yeah, um, but um, uh, and this was with the two X focal length as well. I love it. I, I I I really dig the composition. Uh, if you take just a little bit off the left, I think it would make you would bring more focus to the power lines. A and yeah. It, it, yeah, I can make it a sixteen to nine. I'm covering my hand over the one side, and I can make it a sixteen by nine ratio vertically like that. Oh, there and, you go. That that, yeah. that I think that would work. <clears throat> Yeah, but I, I I dig it. I, I dig the clouds. I dig the way the 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 last of the light is shining on the the the, the little clouds and the uh, that that little strip of cloud there, and then the way the the it just kind of dissolves into the night sky is, is pretty cool. Oh, thanks. Uh, yeah, I think by the mm -hmm. time uh, like this was probably about ten thirty at night, and I'll bet you by one or mm -hmm. two in the morning we were likely fully overcast because they were moving in so yeah oh so that isn't like the remnants of the sunset that's just uh no straight. no that's yeah that's that's flat out darkness <laughs> but oh, cool. you know again there's um the the light pollution from the city that i live in and and it, you know towns that are kind of nearby out in the country i think they help um contribute to that uh you know the lightness uh, you know mind you okay so in editing, I really lightened up that cloud at the lower third there that kind of goes across the frame. Um, I just wanted to emphasize it. Yeah. So yeah. I don't think it was as prevalent as it is, as it really is, or as it looks in the picture. It works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and and, I and having the cloud really... Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I would say having the cloud and the um, the power lines add something where if it wasn't there it would make it not as interesting can i do yeah. that are you guys able to see me scribbling on this no mm, oh nope. yep now we oh, are there it is it just came up <laughs> oh hold on 
I, that this is awesome. Uh-oh. Oh, okay, good, John what? Madden. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, so here here's what makes it cool. You have these clouds right here, right? And then you have this cloud right here, and then you kind of have a dip in there that the power lines are going through. Oh yeah, yeah, I see it. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that, that totally works. I never really noticed that, but yeah, you're right. Yeah, interesting. And I had no clue we can draw on the screen while we were doing this. <laughs> I just saw it in the lower left corner, and I'm like, all, all right, right. Try it on. Uh, sorry, I don't know how to get rid of it now. <laughs> well, that's all right. <laughs> oh, I see the annotate. Yeah, there's so much about Zoom I haven't even explored yet, but. So those who are listening to the audio won't see what Mark did on the screen. If you, <laughs> if you watch it on YouTube, yes, you'll be able to see it. But um, uh, but uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's interesting how you how you pointed that out and how you even saw that. Um, yeah, crazy. Oh, I will have to use that again sometime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so all right, well, um, you know th this has been a. a, a a great episode with with some great discussion some mm -hmm. uh, comedic value i guess you could say as well <laughs> and uh <laughs> uh you know thanks mark for coming on uh you know oh, you're welcome yeah. anytime of course that that uh, i've always said to anybody from the tiny shutter crew the 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 doors open and um you guys can come on anytime uh i know matt he wants to come on again at some point so we'll get him on at some point to talk about something but um uh, so you've got, okay. So tiny shutter, the website is, is it still on? Is it, is it still there? It's still there. the archives. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's whatever. No, but, and but the podcast, still, uh, the po podcast, podcast is, still. is still there. Yep. And so we'll have links to those in the show notes. If anybody wants to go back for a, a trip down memory lane, but now for, with filmish, uh, and, and it should be noted that that's F I L M dash ish yes uh, so what's the website for that you just said it filmish.com filmish.com ish.com yeah okay so i'll link that in the show notes as well and i'm sure it's just a you know the beginnings of a work in progress for you yeah and the youtube channel is also uh, if you go to youtube.com uh and do the at symbol film dash ish you'll be able to uh find it easily uh i have a couple videos up right now more to come uh, i'm aiming to do every other week as far as videos go and okay cool eventually i'll get a podcast uh started on, on that and, and more to come on that all right sounds good well we'll uh mm -hmm. um you know we'll, we'll keep looking for that kind of thing and and i'll put the links to the um youtube channel and uh, the website in the show notes. And, uh, you know, when you get the podcast going, let us know. And, and we'll we'll share that with everybody, too. Awesome. And um, uh, so where can people find you to, to, to follow along with the progress? You could find me on Instagram. I am uh, Mark Sadowski there, Mark with a C. Uh, you could also find me on Twitter. Uh, also, Mark Sadowski, Mark with a C. And uh and, and yeah and and the the youtube channel and the website will uh be updated as uh, often as i can spare it all righty dave how about you yep you can find me pretty much everywhere under prof pod except for uh tiktok where i'm prof pod pgh all righty and you can find me uh uh go to about.me slash mcmillan Notice I said about, not about. <laughs> a boot. A boot. A boot. Uh, and, and all my, my links will be there. I'm working on um, figuring out a better way to express that. Um, I th I've been playing around with some of my URLs and and whatnot. And um, and I should say, too, I, I wanted to bring this up tonight, too. The, the website for the podcast, it, it, right now it's at iphonography.ca, and that will always be how you can access it. But what I'm thinking about doing is because I'm running out of space and it's a, right now it's with Wix. So I'm running out of space. 
uh, you only got, I think it's 500 megabytes. Oh, really? But my my personal website, macmillan.photos, is um, I pay for that. And I think I can incorporate the podcast into my, into that website as, as like a separate section. I'm going to look into that. Um, as, as opposed to making or finding another way to, to put it online, like, uh, my website's on WordPress. So I got to see what kind of storage I got available. If it's tons of storage, then if that shouldn't be a problem. I could have just a separate page just for the website type of thing. And I, I think I can make it work as long as yeah. it's not too much work, but, uh, but anyway, in the meantime, to look at the pictures that you've seen on the, on the YouTube video tonight, or if you've um, been listening on your phone and you see them on the podcast player, you can look at them in better detail on the website for the blog post <clears throat> for this uh, for this show, episode 115 uh, at iphonography.ca. And uh, you can also listen online if you want to do that as well. So, all right, well. Thanks everybody for, for playing along and thank you for everybody in the chat. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to point out too, that, um, uh, Sean Quiteki, uh, when you were doing your rant, Mark, he put on here, OMG, Mark, you make my stomach hurt. <laughs> uh, so that, that's yeah, going to have be that a, effect on people. Yeah. That, that, that's going to be a, good way. <laughs> an awesome that's going to be an awesome separate video in itself. <laughs> oh, enjoy the views on that one. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, well, thanks again, everybody for watching and, and uh, for listening when it, when it does hit the audio and uh, thank you, Mark, for coming along. And mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's always great to have you on and, and, and uh, talk some shop. Hey, would you put that, uh, that, that, that video up uh, as a separate feed? Make sure you put my socials in there. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. And when people yeah. know exactly where to uh, send the hate mail. <laughs> yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I will do that. Um, awesome. So, and uh, thank you, Dave. Uh, thanks for um, yeah, sticking fun. with us through your recovery oh, no. from your half marathon. And we, <laughs> we said in the pre-show, we wondered when you're going to run the other half, and that's going to be in May, right? Now, for, yep, first Sunday yeah. in May. First Sunday right in May. Okay. Well, you, you got some time to get your legs back for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you for having me on. I, I had an awesome time. It was great to be back. And, and I, I apologize for the extra editing that you'll need to do. <laughs> oh, it, it's it's not a worry. Um, I, I got to stay up tonight because I go in on, on nights tomorrow night. So it'll give me something to do while I stay awake. So there you go. it's all good. All right. Well, thanks everybody for watching. And uh, we will see you all on the next one.